The United Nations Climate Summit is supposed to wrap up today, but negotiations now on final agreements are actually going into overtime, into the weekend, at least into tomorrow. The big question here, can the world get all on the same page? A draft of negotiations released earlier today shows different countries with vastly different perspectives are still working on a compromise. We know lots of promises are being made, but not many are enforceable, and some might not even be all that realistic. Remember what's on the line here. Scientists say 1.5 degrees Celsius. That is the highest temperature the world can actually rise, unless we want to have a catastrophic climate disaster on our hands. The research group, though, Climate Action Tracker, says even all the big promises being made in Scotland are nowhere near enough, and that unless much more drastic and radical action is taken, the Earth's temperature will rise not 1.5 degrees, but 2.4 degrees by the end of this century. Joining me now is Canada's Transport Minister Omar Al-Gabra. He was at COP26 this week. Good to have you with us, uh, Minister. I appreciate you taking the time for CTV. Let's start with these negotiations wrapping up into the weekend. I'm curious what it means when we see the world struggling to get onto the same page. Uh, hi, Todd, and uh, good to be back on your show and uh, good to see you. Um, I just came back last night uh, from COP26, and the uh, the energy over there was contagious. There's a lot of optimism and, and promise. Uh, like you said in your introduction, we cannot afford but uh, to miss the 1.5 degrees target. Uh, and, and there's a lot of people at work throughout the negotiations that are ongoing to achieve those goals. So far, there's been significant commitments made at COP26 that are promising, um, but we still need to do more. And this is the objective of this, uh, this conference, to be more ambitious and to deliver more. A draft of a global green agreement released earlier today already facing backlash, as you know, for watering down issues like fossil fuel subsidies, trying to phase out coal as well. There are critics, activists here in Canada, in Scotland, who say this summit is just churning out a whole lot of hollow promises, Minister Algabra. Uh, as you can imagine, these negotiations uh, are, are complicated and difficult. There are so many interests competing and there are so many various definitions however uh, we are clear uh, the science is clear uh, there is no politics in science science uh, demands that we do not exceed the 1.5 degrees celsius and that's what these negotiations are about uh, i am optimistic but I can tell you, Canada is taking a global leadership. When I was there, I could see how the many of the delegates were talking about the examples and the leadership that Canada has set of uh, capping oil and gas sector emissions, of accelerating our zero emission vehicle adoption, uh, of uh, reducing uh, methane emissions. So there, we've really put a lot on the line and we're making a sincere and real commitment and also policy platforms to back these commitments. I wonder how honest your government is being with Canadians, though, about the price that's going to come here as we transition to a greener economy. Uh, we already see blowback from Western provinces. This is going to be painful and it's going to be expensive and it will be expensive for taxpayers as well, Minister Algabra. Are Canadians ready, do you think, to, uh, to pay those prices? Dad, we just had an election on this issue. We've been extremely honest with Canadians uh, that, yes, uh, we have a, a significant challenge ahead of us. But we also see this as a significant opportunity for, for a Canadian economy, for Canadian jobs. Those are new cutting edge uh, technologies and, and, and transitioning of how we produce things, how we consume things. And Canada needs to be at the forefront, not only to save the planet, but also to create jobs so our economy can lead the world in the new era that we're moving towards. How do you convince skeptics like in uh, Saskatchewan and Alberta that this is the right way forward and that they are not going to end up shouldering a lot of the burden here as we transition away from fossil fuels? I recognize the anxiety that many people are, are experiencing, uh, especially people who worked in the oil gas sector. And our commitment to them is that we will continue to st stand by them as they are transitioning. Everybody now knows that we need to, as I said, change our pr production methods, change our consumption habits. And our government has put forward a solid plan that helps in this transition from uh, changing, again, consumption to changing production. We are 
creating jobs in these new areas. They're, so this is the best way to convince Canadians and to demonstrate to Canadians. Canadians, by the way, understand the, the future of their kids is on the line. So I, I think the debate on that whether we need to do something or not is over. The question now is how to do it. And we are demonstrating to Canadians that we have their best interests at heart and at the same time saving the future of this planet for their kids and their grandkids. Well, time is running out to save the planet. But as you know, Minister Algarber, for some Canadians, you know, their number one focus is surviving to the end of the month. They're dealing with rising heating costs, rising gas prices, inflation. And for them, you know, a climate agreement 30 years down the line uh, is, is nice, but it's a bit unrealistic in terms of what they are going through in their own lives. How do you win those people over? Because this is also a, an economic situation for people who, who want to do the right thing. They recognize global warming is an issue. They know we have to do more, but they also have to survive at the end of the month. Uh, Todd, um, Canadians know that our government has been there from day one, whether it is cutting taxes for the middle class, whether it is supporting Canadians who got impacted by COVID, whether it is creating all kinds of not only uh, support, but also job opportunities. As of today, uh, all of the jobs lost to COVID have come back. And those are due to the policies that our government had taken, the support that we provided for small businesses, for individuals, for families, for seniors. So. I understand this anxiety is real, but what they also are seeing, Canadians are seeing that the government is incredibly thoughtful and deliberate about our policies. And again, we can do both. We can save the planet while creating jobs uh, for the future. Uh, and Canadians just need leaders who can help them guide this way, not leaders who keep giving false uh, promises that we can live the way we've always lived. No, we have to, to address climate change, but also find an opportunity where we live, we can live better with better jobs and with better future.